South Carolina State has one of the best classes in HBCU football. In fact, it's one of it's the most underrated class in HBCU football, as well as the FCS probably. Um, I'm saying that right now, and I feel like people don't really know much about the class. They, like they're looking at it, but they're not really looking in depth in how great this class really is, right? If South Carolina State keeps recruiting at this level, they will dominate the MEAC for years to come because right now they are they are so far ahead of every other MEAC school. It's, it's crazy, right? But you know, Howard is doing a good job, just saying. So today, I asked you guys earlier this morning, uh, which which part of the South Carolina State's class did you want to see? Did you want to see the offense or the defense? Most of you voted offense. So here we are. Now, guys, before we get started, you are watching the CFL Podcast. I'm your host, Kobe Orr. And, you know, for those of you who have not subscribed, please consider doing so. For those of you who have subscribed, thank you so much. Like the video, share it, all that good stuff. Now... First, we're going to start off this class with the three quarterbacks that South Carolina State has signed in this class. All three who could really lead South Carolina State to multiple celebration bowls because these kids, all three, I don't know if you coach people, I don't know how you pick a starter, honestly. But we're going to start with Prometheus Franklin, the second. Right, he is 6'3", 190 pounds, and he is a three-star quarterback from Greenville, South Carolina. Now, Prometheus is the number one dual threat in the state of South Carolina. I'm gonna repeat that: he's the number one dual threat quarterback in the state of South Carolina that South Carolina State has pulled off. He runs a four six forty. He throws the ball with a lot of zip when he runs. He's usually running to buy, his, buy himself time in the pocket to deliver the throw. You don't never really see him charge downfield a lot. But when he does, you better watch out because that 4'6 is electric. He is electric. Him and this next quarterback who I'm going to bring up, like I said earlier, I don't know who you find to start. Like I, I don't know, but I'm going to be very excited to see who it's going to be once Corey Fields leaves. So... After Prometheus, we got Zane Dunham, right? The 6'2", 215-pound dual-threat quarterback out of Chester, South Carolina, right? And now, keep in mind, Zane Dunham is one of the most electrifying prospects that you've seen come out of, come out of that part of South Carolina in a very long time. Now, with Prometheus, because they're both dual-threat quarterbacks, Prometheus, I, I don't know... Between him and Zan, who's really the number one dual threat quarterback? Because when I check 24-7 Sports Composite, uh, Zan is actually ahead of Prometheus. So keep that in mind. But, you know, Prometheus says he's the number one dual threat quarterback. Also, Trevor Lawrence is following Prometheus Franklin, right? So that tells, I don't know. I just don't know, I just don't know which one is which. But Zan. If this, if he ain't a Michael Vick, man, this boy is a Marcus Vick. And y'all know how great of an athlete Marcus Vick was in college. So listen, Zan is 6'2", 215 uh, pounds, if I didn't say that earlier. Nationally in the country, he's ranked 1,368. At his position, he's ranked number 85. And in the state of South Carolina, he's ranked number 22. Now, he was one, he was offered by Coastal. He was offered by Virginia Tech, West Virginia, the Gamecocks, Right? South Carolina State took him from these premier Power Five programs. That is a big get. This kid is Houdini in the pocket. I just love to see this kid scramble. Right, same thing with him. He, you know, he can scramble to uh, buy himself time, but when he takes off. And if he sees a lane, he going to take it. And, man, you don't want to let him get a breakaway speed. Because once he gets that breakaway run, once you give him a crease, man, he's gone. Right? Zan Dunham is actually – he's my second favorite prospect in this, in, this, in this class. My second favorite. My first favorite is on defense. But Zan Dunham is a kid who I'm going to bet my money on is going to get that starting nod when Corey Fields is done in South Carolina State. I, I'm putting my money on him, but just know whoever it is out of these three quarterbacks, I'm going to be happy regardless. Now, the last quarterback in this 2022 class for South Carolina State goes by the name of Andre Washington. He's the first kid who I, who I've actually reported on for South Carolina State's class back when he committed a little while ago. So he is 6'4", 200, 200 pounds, right, from Ridgeview High School uh, in Ridgeview, South Carolina. Now, this past season... 
He was 197 for 317. 2,622 yards passing. He averaged 13.3 yards of completion, 26 touchdowns, ahead of seven interceptions, right? And he had a quarterback rating of 106.5. And he also can provide a running dynamic. He's not a running quarterback, but he can get yards when you need it. He has 81 carries, 595 yards, and 10 touchdowns. So he can provide that, that little dual threat game if you need him to. That's just really not what he does, right? But when you look at Andre Washington, you see clear as day his arm is huge, right? And that's the type of that's the type of quarterback you'll need when with all these weapons you got at receiver and running back because you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna need to be able to stretch that ball a little bit. So it's gonna be interesting to see out of these three who wins this match. Now that's it for the quarterback. So now we gotta go to Mr. Shamonte Burgess. Shamonte Burgess is undoubtedly one of the fastest players in the state of South Carolina. You're talking about a baby Deshaun Jackson who will take the top off of your defense, right? He's 5'10, 170 pounds from Lake City High School in Lake City, South Carolina, right? He, SC State offered him. Howard wanted him. Presbyterian, Savannah State, Limestone. Shout out to Limestone. That's where I went my freshman year. They wanted him. Appalachian State, Clemson, Coastal Carolina, and Georgia Southern. They wanted him. They didn't offer him, but they were still they were they were on his on his uh they were on the radar for him, but they they never really offered him. So of course that wasn't going to be an option. Now see what you get with Shamonte Burgess, right? He's a fluid route runner, an absolute playmaker with devastating speed. Like I said, one of the fastest, arguably the fastest in the state of South Carolina. He takes the top off of defenses. He's a return threat, which means he could see the field right away, right? He has surprising bunnies. I mean, the kid can jump. The kid can really jump. Oh, and he high points the football at his highest point. So I love every single thing about Shamonte Burgess's game. Like, I love the fact that South Carolina State went out and got speed to match that size and power that they're genuinely known for. So that's that. Now, let's talk about the quartet of running backs that Jackson State has. Not a duo, not a trio, a quartet of running backs, right? So... We got to start off with Mr. Dimitri Simmons from Goose Creek. Man, this kid is all state. 2,280 yards rushing, 28 touchdowns. This man has breakaway speed, right? One of the, one of the shiftiest running backs you will ever see. He's a threat catching the football out of the backfield. He can block for your quarterback and protect him well. Oh, and he reminds me of a baby TJ Yeldon. That's exactly who he reminds me of, a baby TJ Yeldon. South Carolina State doing a great job uh, with this pickup, but they ain't even done. Oh, no, nah, they not done. Because, see, after Mr. Dimitri Simmons, right, you got Mr. Tyler Smith. Now, Mr. Tyler Smith is a three-star running back from Gaffney, South Carolina, the legendary Gaffney, South Carolina, the legendary Gaffney High School Indians, right, one of the top programs in the state of South Carolina. Now, Josh Shaw, I'm sorry, Tyler Smith, 5'11", 180 pounds, um, co-player of the year at the 5A level, ran for, he has two 1, 1K rushing yard seasons. So like back to back, right? On top of that, 45 touchdowns in his career. He's lightning in a bottle and he was the biggest contributor on his state championship team who just won a state championship this past season. Keep in mind, he's playing against power five talent. He's playing with power five talent at South Carolina State. Why he didn't even get Power 5 offers, I do not know. Some people think it's because of his size. Um, when I look at all the South Carolina State group, South Carolina group chats, that's what they've been saying. Uh, but this kid is dynamic, and he should be at the Power 5 level. But South Carolina State got him. I mean, I know they're thinking, they're thinking the lucky stars that they did because this kid is going to come in, and he's going to be lightning in the bottle, as I said. On top of Tyler, right, you got Josh Shaw. Josh Shaw is a 5'11", 195-pound running back who runs a 4'5'40", okay, and is an all-state running back as well. Now, as far as his production, 1,400 yards, averages 10.69 yards per catch, I mean, per carry, I'm sorry, 26 touchdowns, two-time was he all-region, was he all twice, and he was two-time running back of the year. The production on these kids. 
immaculate, <laughs> immaculate. And it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. Oh, let me also say Josh Shaw can play defense as well. He's, you know, he can definitely play two ways. But I think you're going to want him in the backfield of South Carolina State when you saw them highlights, like I know you just seen just now. Now, last but not least, Mr. TJ Williams from Denmark, South Carolina. Now, TJ Williams is an all-state running back, but he can also play linebacker. But he's 6'2". The boy 6'2". If you put some muscle on him, now you got a now you got a Derrick Henry. He's a beast. No, no, no. TJ Williams is a beast, right? So listen, 1,100 yards rushing, 19 touchdowns, 330 receiving yards on top of three receptions. And you, I know you're thinking, okay, those stats can be a little higher. The run, the running, the rushing yards is cool, but why wasn't the you know the other stats a little higher? That's because my guy plays both ways. As I said earlier, 84 tackles, nine tackles for loss, five sacks, and four pass deflections at linebacker as well. He's a true Iron Man. This man did it all. And he's going to do, he might do it all for South Carolina State as well, right? They, they really did a great job by getting those four running backs. I, I am so excited to see that offense go to new heights. Y'all have no idea, right? Now let's get back to the receivers. Mr. Cyrus Ellison, right, from Pamplico, South Carolina. Never heard of Pam Pamplico in my life, and I've lived in South Carolina my whole life. So, you know, if y'all, if anybody from there and I pronounced it wrong, I'm sorry. I, I do apologize. Now, Cyrus is a 6'4 wide receiver who is a freakish athlete. My boy plays basketball and football. He's an amazing athlete. Um, but at receiver, oh, my God, is this kid good. Is this is this kid good? Oh my goodness! You're looking at a future number one receiver for your offense, right? Last season he put up 27 receptions, 476 yards, eight touchdowns. Like I said, he's a two sport athlete, and man, if I had to make a comparison, baby AJ Brown, baby AJ Brown, receiver for the Tennessee Titans. For those of you who don't know, y'all can look him up though. All right. And then, leaving away from the skill position guys, there's two offensive linemen in this class who they went out and got. Moses Umorin. Now, his mama, she know what she was doing when she named him Moses. Because this man parts defensive linemen like the Red Sea. Listen to me, dog. Listen, 6'5", right? And he's from Atlanta. He's from Atlanta. So I know he can play ball. He's from Carver High School. When you look at his tape, the kid clearly finishes his blocks. He's nasty. I mean, blindside Michael or nasty. He plays with so much aggression. I just love to see it, right? So he's nasty. He finishes, he finishes his blocks. He was first team all Metro as well as all state. So he's, he comes to credit. Excuse me. And last, but most certainly not least, Mr. Trey Franklin. The 6'6", 240-pound offensive lineman from Ridgeview High School, and who is a two-star prospect. Now, you hear Ridgeview again. Yes, he played with Andre Washington. He's blocked for Andre Washington his whole career. So those guys are going to have the chemistry if Andre Washington ends up starting uh, with him. They gonna, that chemistry is already there with these two. Uh, so as far as Trey goes, right, solid, very solid pickup. This is a kid who was wanted by... Offered by Appalachian State, Georgia Southern, Howard, and Virginia. So that tells you there's really something to him, right? I haven't seen much on Trey, so I can't speak much on Trey, right? But I'm going off of what I've heard of Trey. And from what I've heard, this is a very solid pickup, right, to go along with his great size that he already comes into college with already. So, guys, these are all the offensive additions for South Carolina State's 2022 recruiting class. It is amazing. I think it's one of the most underrated classes in HBC uh, football. Keep in mind, the part two for the defense will be coming out in the next few days because um, I'm very busy this week. And guys, you let me know who, what player did was were you impressed by the most when looking at his tape in this class? I want to know all that down below. Who are you most excited about in this class now that you've seen them 
for yourselves. I want to know all that down below in the comment section, right? But with that being said, I'm out. Peace.